morning. This morning in Ghana, I'm representing People's Pension Trust from Ghana, Accra. Um, we are very privileged and grateful that we have this opportunity uh, to be part of this uh, wonderful program. Our theme for this presentation is empowering women leveraging on technology to build security and resilience. There are some trends in what we like to look at some trends. Um, sorry, I don't think I... Globally, people are aging. Um, there's increasing cost of living. Um, unfortunately, the family which is the backbone for support is also breaking down. Um, and the case for micro pension becomes even more compelling when we look at what we have here. As people are growing older, people, uh, cost of living increasing. We are going to have more people live longer. People will have less support and people will need more money. This will culminate in global poverty. The interesting thing is that the informal sector workforce are the ones who are more vulnerable. Because of the nature of their work, the characters of the informal sector, they don't earn regular income and it becomes difficult for governments all over the world to have a statutory and mandatory scheme for the informal sector. What's even more compelling is the figures that we have here. So in Ghana, for example, we have 10 million informal sector workers, West Africa, 460 million, and globally we have 1.8 billion. What even makes it more serious is that women form the majority of the informal sector workers. And as shown on this slide, you see that in South Asia, we have 95% of women forming the informal sector workforce. Sub-Saharan Africa, we have 89%, and Latin America have 59%. Our solution is very simple. We want to leverage on technology by moving from high touch to high tech to ensure sustainability, scaling up, increased self-reliance, and income security in old age. Our pension plan is very simple. What we want to do is ensure that we have a product that meets the needs and aspirations of the informal sector. So for starters, when you join our scheme, we create two accounts for you, the retirement account and then the savings account. With the retirement account, you can't touch it until you are due for retirement. And in Ghana, the statutory age is 60 years. The savings account is an opportunity for you to withdraw part of your savings, even before retirement. And so after six months of your initial um, contributions, you can make a withdrawal. This helps for them to meet their immediate needs. We have embedded in the social security uh, a life insurance bonus. The life insurance bonus, what it does is that in the event of death, quite apart from your accrued benefits, there's also a life insurance bonus for you. Now, COVID really showed us that we need to do more even though we're on the right path because we encourage them to use mobile money to do their contributions. As you can see here, the lady you see here is really a member of our scheme. She's called Justina and she's 45 years. And she works in one of the busiest markets in West Africa, Makola. Justina, before joining the scheme, her main objective was to use, uh, to rely on her two children when she grows old. After we educated her, she became a member of the scheme. And though things are very tough, she's able to save to $4 every week. Previously, Justina was waiting for our agents, as you see on the screen, to go to her to make her contributions. After we introduced her to mobile money, Justina now does this mobile money contributions without our um, agent going to him. And COVID told us that we, do, we need to move to high tech instead of high touch. There are several other Justinas, and therefore our app, we have an app, a USSD app, which helps anybody at all to be able to register, to pay contributions just by dialing a USSD code. This makes it easy for anybody at all, for us to also reach a lot of places. We also have um, SMS receipts. So any transaction that a member makes, she gets an SMS um, message indicating that that transaction has gone through. We are currently kind of trying to work out an IVRs where they can have voice receipts in the local uh, languages. So those who are not um, technological savvy and those who are not literate can also um, hear themselves. We believe in partnerships and therefore we have a lot of partnerships currently in Ghana and we are working on a lot more. We are currently have two telcos, Vodafone and Airtel, who 
will be partner to reach out to a lot more people. We have two banks, Access Bank, and YAF is also a subsidiary of SDSSD, Secretary General Bank. We also deal with um, labor unions. So TUC, the biggest trade union in Ghana, they have a UNUA, Union of Informal Sector Work Association, as their informal sector organization. And we are currently working with them and managing their uh, pension uh, scheme. What next? What we intend to do is to add value to what we are doing. And currently, we are working with CGAP and a data analytics firm to better understand the needs of our members so that we will be able to develop products and we'll be able to do things that will help them be able to contribute more. We will to build a back end that will make it easier for them. And once again, COVID brought it to sharp focus because previously, when people were doing withdrawals, they may have to fill a form, an agent has to bring the form to the office before the form is approved and they can do their withdrawal. COVID told us that we don't need to do that. And therefore, one of the things we have done now is that a simple call to our call center, they will fill your forms and then we will send your withdrawals through your mobile wallet. Just and what we want to do is even use USSD, where a simple dial of USSD will be able to send you your uh, withdrawals. One of the interesting things that we found out was that we have 39% of the women as members in the informal sector. However, in terms of active members, we are 57%, which tells us that the women are better savers and therefore so for sustainability, there's a need to bring on board more women. In view of this, we are trying to put together a gender program. And what we've done is to target women in the northern part of Ghana. The northern part of Ghana, in our database, realize that they are the second lowest contributors to our scheme. And this is so because they are the least empowered economically in Ghana. Their literacy is very high. And they are the least to participate in social economic activities. And so what we intend to do is to develop simple apps that will be able to, through video games, through video stories, through uh, local languages, encourage them, talk, train them about financial literacy, train them about how to save, and also talk to them about their pension. The next thing is to partner with agro-based organizations in the northern part of Ghana and then VSOs. So that through the VSOs, we can digitally um, and give them information up to, about agro-businesses, link them to markets, and then also adopt a reward system that will help them to meet their uh, pension targets. The idea of the reward system is that, for example, these agro-businesses will be able to say, look, we buy your farm produce. Every farm produce we buy, we are going to give you something. They, they pay them premium, and this premium a part will be matched to what you are contributing. We also continue, this app help us continue with the COVID education uh, financial literacy. In the end, what we intend to do is to develop a sustainable and replicable model and publish a best practice guide so that this model can be replicated all over the world. Currently, we have 46,000 members and our asset under management is 1 million. Women from the active, the active uh, members are women of 57% and the average contribution is $2. What we seek to do in future, as in 2021, we want to move our membership to 100,000, increase our AU to $2 million, and have 60 women as active members. By 2025, we want to move our membership to 40 million and have an AUM of $40 million and have over 60% active members of women. We intend to do this by moving to other countries. Currently, we have, a, we have secured partners in uh, Pakistan and Nigeria who are currently working on the regulatory framework and alliances for us to operate. Next year, within the first quarter of next year, we intend to do a feasibility studies in Benin. Then we and then see how we can also move in there. For us, innovation through behavioral science, human-centered designs, data analytics, artificial intelligence will help people to develop innovative pension products that need, meet the needs and aspirations of our 
customers. Before I take leave of you, I would like to um, just play you this short video. Thank you very much for this. Well, so um, being part of this wonderful program will help raise awareness of what we do and provide PPT with access to partnership and technology, allowing us to scale up through learning and innovation. Thank you very much. You're just on time, and thank you so much for that. Uh, can I, can I request our honorable judges uh, to ask any questions if you have? And maybe uh, this time we can start with Leah. Leah, you're on mute. Sorry, I was just having a bit of a trouble with my microphone. Uh, thank you so much. This is a really interesting model, um, and I very much appreciate that presentation. Uh, um, I just have two questions. I was wondering how you ensure sustainability of the company, given this is a very long term model and uh, it is an early stage tech venture. And also in the next five years, what do you see as your biggest barrier to user adoption? Thank you very much. Um, in fact, across the world, what we have um, known is that it takes between five to seven years to break even in a kind of business that we are in. And therefore, our aim is to be able to rope in more members and then increase our AUM because we make our money through fees. And so, for example, in Ghana, the fee that we make is 1.33% of the assets under management. And that is why it's important that as quickly as possible, we rope in more people and then we increase our AUM. And this is where technology comes in and then education also comes in. Because what we have come to understand is that the informal sector workers sometimes think that they don't have money, and it's because of their nature, but they have the money. I mean, we have talked to people who said, oh, look, can you save um, $30 a month? And he says, no, at the end of the month, I can't give you $30, but every day I can give you $2. And so that is their psyche, and that is why we need to do a lot more financial literacy and reach out to a lot more people through technology. Um, I forgot the last question, please. <laughs> no, that's okay. Uh, you're definitely under pressure. Um, I was wondering, what do you see as your biggest barrier to user adoption over the next five years? Our biggest barrier for now, we think, is behavior and trust. Trust. Because if you come to Ghana, for example, just uh, last year, the central bank uh, closed or revoked the license of a lot of microfinance uh, companies and banks. Now, for the informal sector in Ghana, giving money is giving money. It doesn't matter whether you are a pension company, insurance company, or microfinance or a bank. And so that creates a lot of uh, trust issues. And that is why it is important for us to be able also to deliver uh, when they make requests for us. And that's why we think that with technology, for example, currently we are doing withdrawals within 48 hours. But with technology, we believe that through the USSD, if I want to make a withdrawal, it could be a matter of minutes and I've done it. And that will create the necessary uh, trust that we need. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Romy, would you like to go now? 
thank you, Coffee Polly, for your uh, nice presentation and uh, for your model. Especially, I think that your model will contribute to close the gender gap uh, properly. So I have a couple of questions. Uh, you mentioned that um, uh, your operation will be in Nigeria and Pakistan and uh, the next year in Benin. So regarding the international um, uh, uh, replication of your model, uh, did you uh, consult with the uh, regulators and what types of challenges you face uh, uh, when you uh, 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 regulators uh, in other countries? Uh, and uh, another one is the data protection that uh, what measures uh, do you take for uh, data protection in your model? Thank you. Please, can you go over the second question again? Uh, regarding the data protection that uh, in your model, uh, how you protect the, the data of your of the uh, uh, okay. participants of your uh, model? Thank you very much. And so for the regulatory framework, what we have realized is that every country has a framework. For example, in Ghana, we have a National Pension Regulatory Authority that will have to give you license to be able to operate as a corporate trustee or a pension company. What we've learned in Pakistan is that they use the asset management companies, and then the asset management companies are able to now operate um, a pension scheme. Nigeria currently is reviewing their law which we have even made an input. So after the review, then we will know exactly how we're going. The good thing is that the model itself, being able to collect contributions flexibly at any time will not change. We just have to fit this model into the regulatory framework. And that's why, for example, in Benin, we want to do a feasibility studies to be able to know how the regulators operate today. So as I said, in Pakistan, you have to have an asset management company and then through the asset management company you'll be able to do this business now with data what we, we what we do is that it's very important that we have the bio data and the financial data and once again we operate within the regulatory framework of the country so in ghana we have a data um, uh, law which tells us which data we can give out and which data we cannot give out so we, we collect this data and based on the regulatory framework in the country, we pray to it. But for a pension company, the most important thing is how you keep your data because you need data for a long period. And we have the systems in place to be able to um, have this data in place. Uh, so one more uh, single question. Um, so uh, do you have any uh, uh, multiple language option? Suppose in a single country, if you operate your model. So do you have any option for multiple languages in a single country? Multiple? Languages. Multiple lenders. I, I can't get you wrong. Well. I, I mean, languages. Uh, multiple languages. If I can uh, help. Yeah. Uh, does your platform allow, uh, or does your platform has you know options for multiple languages? Currently, no. Currently, no. It is uh, what we uh, have done is to be able to have our IVRs in uh, different languages in say in Ghana, but currently our platform doesn't have multiple languages. Uh, Bromizul, that was the question you wanted to ask, I believe, right? Yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much uh, for those questions. Uh, can I request Nom Sibu to come in? Thank you so much, um, Kofi, for the presentation. Um, my you. quick one would just be a, basically a rudimentary question to say, uh, are you registered with the National Pension Association of your where you are uh, currently operating? And then I think for me, it would also be clarity how your, your pension, your, your scheme is probably uniquely different from a, a, a normal social um, social scheme in our countries, um, so a social protection scheme. Um, I think that uh, uh, that is where I can end. Thank you. Thank you very much. So yes, we are licensed. We were licensed as far back as 2016 by the National Pension Regulatory Authority. We are a member of the Chamber of uh, Trustees in Ghana, so we have our license. Um, number two. The uniqueness of our scheme 
uh, as against uh, the normal schemes is that in a lot of the countries, because of the nature of the informal sector fund, operate a statutory scheme by the government, which is more of a defined benefit scheme. And by that, I mean that contributions are deducted as source, they are monthly contributions, and then the uh, payment of benefits are defined. The uniqueness of our scheme is one, yes, it's a defined contribution scheme. Two, uh, payment is flexible. So today you can make $1, tomorrow you can make $2. The next day there's no money, no problem. And then again, it is uh, payment is also not fixed at a particular period. Currently we have some cocoa farmers who what they do is that during the season that they are selling cocoa, that they convert their cocoa bags to money and pay us their contributions. And so for example, for the market women, it makes it very easy for them to be able to contribute because they earn money uh, by the day and some of the days are not so good. So the uniqueness is the flexibility of the scheme. And then also uh, based on this flexibility, trying to adopt technology to push this flexibility to reach a lot more people. Thank you so much. Namsabu, do you have any other question? All right. Uh, then uh, let's let's try and see if we can take a few questions from the participants. And we have uh, received a, a, a couple of questions. Uh, let, let me read the last one first for you. Uh, how People's Pension Trust maintains real value of the money collected and where does it invest them? Thank you very much. So in Ghana, for example, the law is that as a corporate trustee, you must have two partners to work with. You must have a custodian bank and then a fund manager. Our custodian bank is Standard Chartered Bank and our fund manager is Data Bank. So what the all money that we call it goes straight to the custodian bank and then the fund manager will advise us on how to invest it. The law is also very rigid on how to, uh, where to invest. So you can invest in the treasury bills, government bonds, uh, local government bonds. Now the good thing is that um, so far the interest rates have been very high, far, far, far above. So we have an investment policy. Our investment policy is that at any time our investment return from the fund manager should be um plus four of the treasury bill rates um currently the treasury bill in ghana is around 13 percent and we are doing um, an average of 17.5 percent and so for the past four years in rare returns we are doing very well okay um kofi will take one more question and that has two parts and i would really appreciate if you could you know answer that question in just two minutes time uh the question is, what is the plan for a market like Nigeria in terms of contributions, collections, which does not have a similar mobile money structure like Ghana? Uh, and the second part is, what type of investments are you permitted to engage in the markets you operate in? I think I've already mentioned about the investment that we can be operating. The law restricts us in the kind of markets that we can invest in. So we can do treasury bills, we can do government bonds, we can do local bond, uh, authority bonds, we can do real estate, we can do um, equity. But the truth is that um, currently our AUM, we think it's not got to the place where we should do equity. And even before you do equity, the regulator should give you, um, you should really get the permission for the regulator because it's not all equity that will yield you the necessary resource. Yes. Um, Nigeria, I yes, it's right that they may not have uh, the mobile money that I have. But when we started, what we did was to have uh, what we call sales agents. And then we, we worked with groups and associations. So once we bring the association on board, we talk to the association for the association themselves to give us one person they trust. And this person at their meetings will do their collection physically, and then we go and pick it up. So, um, but that's why we want to move to technology. So even though without technology, we must have the manual way of doing things. So one of the strategies is to deal with big, big, big as trade associations. When you deal with trade associations, they have their internal mechanisms that we can take advantage of. So these are some of the things that we will be doing when we go to places that they, do, they are not um, where we are in Ghana in terms of mobile money. 
All right. So with that, we have come to the end of our session. Uh, thank you so much to the three finalists for your glorifying presentations.